All right, so now that you've completed all of the videos and assignments for unit three, you're now ready for your project. So I wanna show you what this project will look like. You should have one of the programming assignment sheets in front of you. So make sure that you're looking at that. I can pull mine up on the desktop as well, but make sure that you have that pulled up and you're ready to go. So you should have this sheet in front of you so that you can access it as I'm talking about program. So if you read here, it says in this programming assignment, you will create programs that use if then statements and their variations to control the flow of a program. Your program must be well written, documented, easy to read, free of errors, all of that good stuff. So this first page has all the requirements for commenting. It says programming for the code will need to start with the following documentation. So you can see that's in here right here. I have commented out a large portion of the code. I have my name, the date, the course that I'm in, the instructor, the project, and a summary of the project. So it says this program will run a mood light on a timer. Multiple colors will appear for, you can have multiple seconds or half of a second or whatever the requirements are, cycling through the colors continuously. So that's the program we are creating. If you then look in here, it says, you know, it already has all that information there. Then it says carefully document each section of code and its purpose. You may comment before a section of code or after the same line, but you will need to comment. So you can already see here, I have commenting here. You need to have comments that are related to each section of code. So you should not go more than a couple lines without including some sort of comment. I will take off for comments. Comments are a vital part of this process. It's you documenting what you're doing and why. So if you or someone else reads this in the future, they know what you're doing. Then the last piece here, which you'll see, says at the end of the program, include a brief narrative section with the following. So at the very, very end of your program, you should have those three questions in there saying what concepts you used, what you liked, what you didn't like. You have these questions at the bottom every single time. So I can see you're reflecting upon the process that you use as you went through the game. So then at the end of this program, you will need to turn in the following. You will have pseudocode, you will have documentation, then you will have the program. So your pseudocode, what that means is you will need to actually sit down and think through the problem. So before you start coding, I need you to break this down into small chunks of what you're going to do. You're going to solve this part first, you're going to solve this part second. This is how you're thinking of solving this part of the program. I need to see written documentation of what you're doing. So I need to basically see you brainstorming your code in advance. You don't just jump in, that is not what good programmers do. You sit down and you make little problems that you're going to solve. So maybe first, you're going to solve the problem where you're trying to figure out how to make the colors change every half second. Then you're going to select the colors that you're going to code to. Then you're maybe going to add in an extension, you're going to add in the disco part. But I need to see each chunk of pseudocode that you're going to do, how you're going to brainstorm through this project. It should not be done willy-nilly and with no planning. So you will need to hand in your pseudocode and whether that is typed in Google Drive showing me you thought it through, it's handwritten. Maybe you wrote it on a whiteboard and you took a picture of it. I need evidence that you thought through this process before you jumped in. Then at the very, very end, you will hand in a hard copy. You will also hand in your pseudocode and you will save this correctly to the shared drive and I will show you how to do that when you get to that point. Now, if you flip to the back side, here are your program instructions. So it says NASA has a new request for, from the astronauts they will be sending up into space next month. Instead of having a moonlight that changes colors continuously, they would like a simpler moonlight with the following requirements. So you need to meet these requirements in your program. Your moonlight will change colors every one half second. Your moonlight will have at least four different colors. You may have more than four, but four is your minimum and the mood light will continuously rotate through these four colors indefinitely until the program is stopped. So if I press start, this is what you will see. You will see that it changes colors every half second. I have four different colors of orange, green, purple, blue, or pink, excuse me, orange, green, purple, pink, orange, green, purple, pink. It cycles through those colors continuously and changes every half second. And this will continue forever until I press stop or until I close out the program. So that is the basis of the program that you are creating. That is what it should do. Change colors every half second, have at least four different colors, and will go continuously. So you have to figure out how to solve all those problems. Now, a couple of things for you to think about if you are stuck. Think about what variables you need. Think about what objects you need. Think about if they are global or local. Think about what variables or objects will change as the program runs? Where will these changes need to occur in your code? 
Number five is probably the most important question on here. How many times do update and draw run per second? So use that game loop to your advantage and how can you track when you need to change your picture on the background? How will you keep track of how much time has gone by? So again, thinking about how you can utilize that game loop to your advantage. How can you track when a half a second has gone by? How will you know based on time what color should currently be displayed? And how many different cases will you need to account for? Basically, what concept in class could you use that will help you to know which color should currently be displayed? So these are the questions to think about if you get stuck. If you need some guidance as you work, please let me know. But think about these questions first. Jot these down as you're, using your, as you're writing your pseudocode. What do you already know? What can you use to help you as you program? If you want to add an extension in, essentially what I will do is if you add an, ex if you add in an extension um, and if you get points docked anywhere else in your program, I do give you points back if you add an extension. So one extension that you could do is you could take your mood light one step further and maybe make it look more like a disco ball. So have black kind of flash in the middle somewhere looking like a disco ball. And if you think of another extension you'd like to add in, please let me know. I will consider that for additional points back as well. So this is an extension for you to add in. This is especially for my Java students, the kids that have that background, you should be thinking about what else you can add in besides the bare basics. That's what good programmers do. What other problems can you solve as you're going? And then at the very, very end, these are questions that you should be able to fin answer when you finish the programs. So maybe you can't answer them right now, but after you finish this program, you should be able to say, okay, if I wanted to change this, so colors change every two seconds, how would your code be altered? Or if you wanted to add seven, co seven colors instead of four, how would you need to account for that in your code as well? So these questions are questions where when you're done, you should be able to answer these easily. They should be no issue once you're done with your program. So this is your first project. If you have any questions once you start getting started, please, please, please let me know. But use the pseudocode, use the questions to ponder, use your knowledge of the concepts you've watched in class so far to get started and then I'll help you from there. So best of luck.